color painting hosted by Troll Lord Games. Uh, it's our new night that we're doing. This is uh, now Thursday night instead of Wednesday night. Uh, we're doing this because uh, we were conflicting with some other people's schedules and we've just moved over to this night for some painting. So I'm glad that you all uh, can make it for here. Some painting. With, so oh, hold I'm on glad a that you all. Uh, can there we go. I started playing in my ear. I don't like that. Anyway, so tonight we're going to continue working on our red dragon that we are going to be giving away for um, a... Uh, actually, we're not giving this away. We're auctioning this this one off. Uh, we're going to be uh, taking and uh, auctioning this model off once it's painted. And that money is going to go to... Um, uh, Wounded Warriors, and we're also going to, uh, Troll Lords is going to throw in a few other things to go with it, such as, uh, I believe two, uh, books, the, uh, Player's Handbook and the Monsters and Treasures for Castles and Crusades. Uh, I'm trying to talk them in a little bit more, but, uh, you know how that goes. Uh, can't always have what we want, uh, mainly because stock is low on certain things. I was trying to get a Castle Cooper's Guide out of it for somebody, but, um... But they, uh, they said that stock was too low for that. Oh, well. So, and I've actually got a new paint I've been playing around with. And I'm trying to make a test palette for it here real quick. Uh, that's going to be dry. So we can try to, it's a metallic that everybody's been raving about. And I finally was able to get, get one of it. So, hold on one second here. Looks like I got a message somewhere. Uh, it's probably just saying that I've went live. Yep, there we are. And no, it's not GM's tricks for the trade. Um, let's see if I can change that. Um, do, 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 nope. I'm a mod, but I can't change it. I don't know how to do it. Let's see here. Crater dashboard. Uh, no, that's not it. Oh well. All right. So as soon as this guy right here draws, uh, we're going to be uh, playing around with this new paint and uh, giving it a lick. So let's see here. Um, there is Dale. What's up, Dale? How are you doing today? Oh, I'm fine, Daniel. Dale, you can join in to the uh, the. Uh, Discord channel tonight if you like. So let's see here. Try to get everything situated. Let me get my stuff up here. So uh, as I normally like to say, I do have a Patreon that helps keep me in supplies, um, supplies only. Um, this isn't. I'm not trying to make a living or nothing like that. So uh, um, this helps us. You know, do the things that we do and ha have little things that I can show off to you guys. So, let's see here. Uh, here you go. Here is the Patreon. If y'all would like, I have three levels for that. I have the the four dollar level which actually gives you access just to our discord channel so you can chat with us at any given time um i have a five dollar level that actually gets you access to the discord channel and any recipes that i create beforehand uh, so you get access to them before the show starts so you can go home and uh get copies of uh, you know get to get the ingredients that you need to make this uh, stuff and then the other thing is the um, $30 level, which means you get an hour of my time a month uninterrupted so I can help you with your painting, or um, I will paint one of your miniatures um, if you ship it to me, and, and I'll ship it right back as soon as I'm done painting it. So um, let's look over a couple things I'm working with right now. So uh, some of the things I'm working on, uh, on like my Friday night show, um, I've been working on these guys here. Uh, let me do a zoom in here. This camera gets here before we start working on our other stuff here. So uh, this is some uh, Age of Sigmar stuff that I'm currently working on. Um, then I've also got these over here, which I've just started up. So hopefully um, they'll look pretty good when I'm done with them. So, um, so here's our dragon. So tonight what we're working on 
is we're going to be doing um, his underbody here. Uh, we are going to be doing all of his talons, his horns, his mouth, and possibly his wings. Um, I've yet to decide what color I want to do his spine in. So if anybody can give me some input on what color you think the spine should be, um, that would help out. I've never really been good at picking the color of spines for things. So let's see here if I can fix this camera a little bit. There we go. Of course, you see my nasty wet palette here. Um, so let's see here. So the first color we're going to get out today is going to be Fire Lizard. This is a army painter color. It is kind of like a, it looks to be a, an orange with like maybe a hint of green. Paint it black. Oh my gosh. Black or a dark army green. Oh, there you are, buddy. So let's see here. What do you think about this color oh. here for the uh, the chest plate, the chest? You see it? Yeah, that's actually uh, very close to what I sort of imagined in my mind. All right, let's see what we it's got. It's not here. like a light, very feathery sort of actual real gold color, and it's not a metallic you either yeah but it's not like pumpkin orange which would be like you know i'm sorry but that would just be garish man <laughs> all right let's see here so here what we're going to be doing is we're going to go up each one of these uh plates fill it in then we'll come out with a wash for it so this is the the tedious part here because i've got to get up under the head you know let's, i'm thinking about painting the wings the same color what do you think about that Well, I'd have to see what the paint looks like first, I think. And we'll probably have to do multiple colors of it, multiple coats at least. And, of course, um, all this... It looks be... really yellow squirting it out just there. Yeah, it, and it's going to get toned down a lot too because I'm going to wash it with a red wash. Right. So it'll get toned down a little bit. Yeah, red. remember, I'm a yeah. complete noob with this stuff, so yeah. you'll have to remember us oh. newbies. Well, this is what this painting show is for is to get people started painting and to teach them how to paint and, uh, you know, to keep them from getting frustrated at the beginnings of it and stuff like that. Because everybody has to start somewhere. So, my buddy Jason's online. He's that uh, Del Calverville, Del Calver Hall or whatever. Let's see here. So, we've got to come in here and we're going to do the side scales here so we can, like, yeah, you know, like when you're a kid and you're like coloring the lines. So, do you ever use um, the technique where you apply the uh, the paint the way you are now, but then use like a bit of tissue or something to wipe the excess off the top so that the paint's only left in the crevices? Uh, so, what you're thinking about? Okay, so so that's kind of like washing. That's what a wash is. So. Um, what you would do with a wash is you would paint it and then a wash is a pigment with a binder that's a very thin and it goes into the crevices and darkens the crevices like that and it and it, um, it leaves the tops open now at one point back in the day when people still used um, oil paints um, there was a thing called an oil wash and the oil wash, um, what that did was you would paint your model, right? And then you would take your, um, you would take oil paints, mix it with a little bit of mineral spirits. And then um, you would paint that all over the model. And let that dry, then wipe off the excess with a tissue paper. Okay, maybe that's what I'm thinking of. I don't know where that came from. I'm sure I've seen it done someplace or it's, by someone. It's a it's a really old technique, and so it's start like because before acrylics are really like what good. That's probably the best way to put it. Um, let's see here. I see the red dragon. I want to paint it back. No colors anymore. Oh come on, Jason. Um, but no, the. Um, the thing that's coming back into style is painting models with oil paint. Okay. Um, 
and that was actually the thing back in the day was because there wasn't a lot of uh, good acrylics to use when you know people first started painting models um, and this and I'm, when I say that I'm talking about like in the 60s this, this wasn't like the uh, D&D models this was like I'm building a Napo Napoleonic army and stuff like that so uh, people use those um, uh, those oil paints for that so well they were probably painting lead too at that point. oh yeah yeah, I still have some lead mini somewhere. So. No, and I get that, and that's I guess I guess that's probably why I was asking. Oh yeah. Um, because it seems to me like the 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 newer technique is this concept of a wash, um, and I think the medium, like the paints that you're using, have changed to the point where. Um, while it looks intimidating, I'm encouraged to see that with the whole idea of applying many layers as various types of washes and stuff, that you can really get some nice effects. And the best thing about it is the washes go on fairly light for the most part. Yeah. So if you bung it up really badly, um, it seems to me it would be slightly less difficult to recover it with like a slight palette change, let's say, yeah. or applying a thicker wash to like hide a mistake. Yeah. And that's, that's, yeah, that's the thing. And like, I don't, I bung up stuff. I like that word, by the way. Um, I mess up stuff all the time. So, um, but yeah, you covering it up and going back and doing things like that is fairly simple. And, with washes, though, I mean, washes washes can be tricky, um, especially if they're cheap washes, because um, they have a tendency to cause what's called pod marks. And so I, the in person, the, the method that I really teach is called the Army Painter Method. And what that does is, so if you notice, um, you'll probably notice as you watch me paint, is a lot of the colors I use are really bright. And like bright variations of what they uh, should look like, and that's what Army Painter is. So, you know, that's that's their whole color thing. It's like have really bright colors, and once you just block in all the colors, like you're coloring a picture, you just slap a wash on it, let it dry, you're ready to rock and roll. And that's, I mean, because their whole premise is to to be able to paint a model as fast as you can. Uh, but I kind of blend that technique with a few other techniques like layering and stuff like that. And so, but yeah, it's just got to know, you get used to it after a while. You learn, learn your tip, your, the way you're, I can't use words today. They're hard. Um, <laughs> I noticed you're having trouble. Yeah. I don't know what it is. I can't paint and talk tonight. I don't know what it is tonight. Hold on. Let me drink a water. I had too much, um, uh, too much uh, pulled pork for dinner, I guess. Yeah, how'd that turn out? Must have oh, been good. Oh, I thought it. I thought it was great. My daughter, who uh, likes to give me a hard time, says, "Oh, you've done better." And I was like, "Thanks." Oh, she, oh she, that sounds like a challenge. She's she's fifteen. She's at that age, so gives me a hard time all the time. My wife's like, "It's good." And my son, my middle child. Um, well, Chuck, you could drive down here and get some if you wanted it. Um, but my middle child, he doesn't like smoked meat. So, like, I don't make him eat it. So I'm like, I understand not liking something. So go make yourself a sandwich. <laughs> no, seriously. Especially the strong tasting stuff. And, yeah. well, I mean, you know, I've always enjoyed barbecue of one sort or another, or even smoked meat. Um Never had access to it when I was a kid, but as an adult, there was no problem. But there were lots of other yeah. foods, like, you know, like cabbage. Uh, I couldn't take cabbage as a kid. It had too strong a smell, too strong a yeah. taste and stuff. But now I can't get enough of it. It's like a, oh, such a cabbage. versatile vegetable. I love fried cabbage. Have you ever had fried cabbage? No, but I <laughs> it sounds good, man. Okay, so what you do... I've just got into... Uh, making my own sauerkraut right now oh that sounds good um so growing up so i'm you know i'm from northeast tennessee so therefore uh, i'm a southern appalachian um you know and we have a very uh scottish influence here because you know the scott irish all descended here at one point and everything we do is fried 
So, um, my grandmother used to fry cabbage, and I learned how to do it myself. And that is, uh, the best way to do it is cut your cabbage up into, like, almost like squares. Um, probably about an inch and a half. Um, and then, um, inch and a half by inch and a half. Boil it a little bit, you know, like a power bowl. Uh, drain it, and then put some, uh, shortening, like Crisco or lard in a pan. And chunk it in there with some salt. Oh my gosh. It's just amazing. Sounds yummy. Definitely mm -hmm. sounds Scottish. Yeah. We we fry everything down here. Well, I'm up here in Prince Edward Island, Canada's smallest but most beautiful province on the East Coast. And there's a lot of Irish in the island. The island. I mean, there's a lot of all the old world... Um, cultures here irish scottish a lot of gaelic a lot of celtic influence um, oh, yeah. so yeah uh, um and it's a potato growing province oh, i think yeah. uh, pei and idaho are always uh chomping at each other's neck as to who has the best crop of the year kind of thing yeah and that's fine but it's very indicative of the kind of cuisine here so it's like um a lot of uh, hearty vegetables, which means things like cabbage, a lot of root vegetables like potatoes, uh, mixed with a lot of um, uh, grass-fed beef and pork, and a lot of uh, fresh uh, fish and shellfish and oh, stuff. Wow. So, yeah. Um, yeah, it's real nice. I really enjoy it. Uh, I've learned to cook a lot of uh, uh, different things uh, in a lot of different ways. Canadian taters. So, have you ever had fried potatoes? Oh, yeah, all the time. I've had potatoes 60 ways from Sunday, my okay. friend. Good, good. Remember, Got Quebec's it. just to the north of me, the land of the great poutine. <laughs> That's more of a French fry, ain't it? Poutine and gravy. Yeah. Poutine and gravy with cheese curds. Oh, I love That's cheese the official. Curds. Every time I go to Gary yeah, Collin, I have to stop at Walmart, and we... We pick up like four or five packs of flavored cheese curds and we keep them in the cooler down at the gaming area. <laughs> yeah. oh, you're a bad man. I know. It's funny though, being down there. All right, that yellow. Huh? Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, you go ahead. I was just going to say that yellow is looking a lot better to me than when you first squirted it out. Yeah. It looked good at the, the color through the bottle. It's kind of like a marigold. It looked really crazily bright, but. Against that pinkish red, which I have to say I'm better impressed with this week now that it's all dry and settled down than I was when I went on fresh. Yeah, I've still got a few uh, areas of cleaning it up too. So, um, but you no, know, it's a. Uh, I was gonna say though, the uh, it's kind of like a marigold color almost. So, yeah, I see that. But no, it's it's crazy going to Gary Con. Uh, if you ever get a chance to go. It's, it's nuts. Like, we'll be down there, and, like, Steve Jackson just walks in and, like, bums a, a cup of coffee off of you. Because one of my guys, his, his wife works for Starbucks, so he gets a Starbucks card. Like, I mean, it's like, she's one of, like, corporate Starbucks. So he gets a credit card for Starbucks. And, like, he can go and get whatever he wants from Starbucks at any given time. Snazzy. And so, like, he always came back with breakfast from Starbucks every morning, and Steve Jackson's like, uh, can I get a cup of coffee? I'm like, can you give me a copy of every GURPS manual? <laughs> so. Black man. Yeah. Oh. Nah, it's cool. Get to meet people like Margaret Weiss and the Hickmans and stuff like that. They come down there and play with people in a game area. It's pretty cool. So to Calver Hall, who's your uh, buddy? I'm sorry, uh, his name has slipped me again. Is it Jason? <laughs> He's going on. Uh, is there any other way of cooking cabbage? Is wrong. Yeah, and I would have to agree. I, I can't argue with that. Yeah, there are a lot of things come close, but yeah, no, I'm I'm going to try fried cabbage. Yeah, I guess. making the sauerkraut is like dead simple. Oh yeah, my grandmother used to make that in chow chow. I don't know if y'all have chow chow yep, there. Yeah, got a okay. recipe for that too. Okay, good. We're gonna work a little bit on the base tonight as well, so we're gonna get it set up for priming. But yeah, 
<clears throat> so me and Jason, we've technically known each other since we were really little because our dads were friends. But we became friends um, in high school when he was 15 and I was 16. So tell you anything, I'm 42 now. So we've been friends that long. He was, uh, me and him have been gaming together since second edition Dungeons and Dragons. So he just lives down the road from Old me. schoolers. I love yeah. that. Oh, yeah. I would probably be playing second edition still. Except I wanted to um, see what all the fuss was about ascending armor class instead of descending oh, armor yeah. class. Yeah. How weird is that, eh? Because eh, I've got so, all the second edition books here that I'll ever need. Some people like Thacko. Now, I love second edition. Um, I've started rebuilding my second edition collection. But the... Um, you know, I, I, I try to play when whatever I can because it's hard sometimes to get into a game, you know. Um, you know, my son, I've got him playing Castles and Crusades, but when his friends come over, they're like, let's play Dungeons and Dragons. So I have to pull out all the 5th edition stuff. Oh, so they're 5th edition geeks. Well, he's only And three. I mean, you know, to get younger kids into the hobby, I can definitely see that because yeah. they're going to... Definitely go for that kind of uh, totally written down, rule oriented uh, yeah. uh, certitude. <laughs> yeah, you know. So let's see here. Let's get his. And and I understand that as as part of the process of like you know wanting to be more grown up because I mean uh, you know imaginations are considered to always be such a kid's thing. Yeah. So you know, but they'll get out of that soon but, enough. Well, they're only ten, so they're. Uh, I think a lot of it's too that they're just used to playing a lot of video games. Yep. So that's that's just it. So they're used to being told what you can and can't do in a video game. Let's Are they see. readers? Uh, my son is. So he's uh, he's a really good reader. I'm trying to see what other areas. Well, that's good. This color. He uh, but he does play castles and crusades when his cousins come over, and he plays dungeon crawl classics and mutant crawl classics. So. Oh, nice. Yeah, I've got a buddy that it plays a lot of old school games, and we start playing with him on Sundays whenever he has a thing after church um, at the comic shop, and he usually runs those, so. All right, come on now. That's cool. This is the first coat, so it's going on fairly thin and blotchy. They need to be punished. Well, if their Uncle Chuck would come over and run them a game... Sorry, I'm commenting on Chuck there. I've been trying to get my son interested in running his own game. They did. He did run a Swords and Wizardries um, lot with uh, with his um, Cub Scouts last year. His Cub Scout then. Right. So. Is there a badge for that in Cubs? Uh, actually, there is a. Um, not in Cubs, there's a, uh, it's like a uh, belt loop is what we call it. Um, but in Boy Scouts, there's a thing called uh, game creation. And um, there's a merit badge for that. And I've, I've been asked to run that at Merit Badge University this year. And I was like, uh, it's more than an eight-hour course, guys. Because I usually get kids that come out with their own homebrew RPG system or war game. So... And I'm just like, yeah. That's cool, though. I, I find that very interesting. Yeah, it is. So you let's know. let that dry. I'm going to see, put a second coat on there afterwards. Uh, let's play with this metal, though, real quick while it dries. So, Jason, pay attention to this. I'm only saying that because he's online. Um, so, okay, so I took, and I know the white's a little blotchy here. Um, so I've got a, you know, um, a semi-gloss black and a flat white over here. And I want to see what this looks like on both. So let's move this out of the way. So this is the new color. This is uh, called White Aluminum from Vallejo. Um, it's their airbrush uh, metal. They pretty much say this stuff is liquid metal. So the thing is, though, um, if you can see the bubbles around here, if you don't have bubbles all the way around here, it means there's it, it separates really quick. So we've got to shake it. So I'm going to put it on the the, um, the vortex over here. 
so uh, that noise I have a uh, a uh, uh, thing it's a they use them in laboratories it's a vortex uh, mixer for test tubes but mine's designed to mix up uh, tattoo ink so smoke you some ribs well that was about a month ago there won't you come over tomorrow for lunch buddy try to get Chuck out of this house Okay, let's see what we got here. Oh, see how we got all bubbles down on the bottom here? So, that's us mix up. So, what we're going to do is we're going to paint this over. I'm just going to squirt it directly here. Um, the lid, the nozzle top is the same that uh, they Vallejo uses for all the airbrush stuff, like right here. It's an uh, angled tip, so you can squirt it directly into the airbrush. Um, this stuff, I did play around with it the other day. It brushes on things very well, but what we're going to do is see how it looks different on the two different colors. So I'm just gonna take my old big fat brush here and we're just gonna spread it out some. And this will go a, a, like a large coverage area. So we might end up doing most of the card. And I'm pretty sure that the black's gonna look pretty good, but the white is gonna look kinda like hot garbage. So in, in this black I'm playing around with is a new um, primer I've been messing around with too. So we might get a little bit of reaction with it, so. You can look here how the paint is pulling away right in this area. <clears throat> and I'll show you. I, I'm already not liking this primer because it shouldn't be pulling away from anything like that. So, But this stuff's supposed to, especially if you're putting it on like a, a gloss black, they say it just looks like chrome. But we're going to find out. I already like it though. I like uh, me metallics that are thin. I will tell you, I don't like what it does to my my water uh, pot though. It leaves little bits of floating flakes everywhere in the water pot. So, let's see here. No. Yeah. Let's see here. Have to put some more on there. So, just drop. Uh, let's see here. I have, um, uh, greasy beans, greasy, or, uh, uh, greasy bean, um, green beans here, Chuck. Like the really good ones, home canned ones. So, so we're going to let this dry up some. Now this is technically supposed to be airbrushed, but I just don't feel like loading it in the airbrush. Mainly because I don't have a mask on right now, and I don't want to breathe this metallic in. So we're going to figure out how this dries. But if you look, I mean, you can look in the brush. Look at that. I mean, it looks like metal. I almost want to let it dry in the brush. It looks better the longer I look at it, but I'm still not convinced. Yeah. Let's see. I'm going to quit playing around with it. I'm going to let it dry. So let's sit over here. Now this is what I don't like about it in my water pot. And I'm getting ready to buy a second one of these just for metallics. So now watch. You'll see little bits of metallic float to the top. And it's not an oil at all. This is an acrylic paint. So... Uh, let's see here. Let's see if you can see. You see the... The metallic floating in. It's kind of hard with the white, but if you look where the reflection is. Yeah, my video's still trying to catch it. Uh, that's right. I'm running, I got a new iPhone, so I've uh, got a little bit better video quality on it. So let's go ahead and while this dries, I'm going to go grab the base real quick. Uh, let's see. And some super glue. I can sing the girl from Ipa Nipa in the background as we segue to the next section of the show, if you'd like. <laughs> Actually, I thought about doing, um, what is my super glue? Do I already have a thing of it out here? Um, I actually did start, start thinking about coming up with, um, you know, like minute marks and changing the subject and stuff like that. Uh, to kind of be a little bit more professional. I think it might be interesting so here's the base now this is what i'm gonna tell you that i don't like so this by itself can be good 
I mean, I mean that's a good big solid base right here. Um, they come with these discs as well. So I'm going to glue it here, and then we're going to fill in the rest of this with sand. But this is the thing that I don't like about these bases from WizKids. Do so you see that big air bubble right there? It's technically not an air bubble. It's just them trying to say plastic. Yeah. Yeah, it's just annoying as crap. I can't do anything about it. Aside from not buying WizKid stuff. But, I mean, their models are pretty good. I think they're a little bit better than Reaper. So, so we're going to put super glue here. All right. I'm just going to stick it on there for right now. Spread it out some. Okay. As that's dry, I'm going to go get the Tower of Stuff. A.K.A. Sand. Um, let's do... Got this sepia colored sand let's do that no let's do the red oh uh, this one's fine okay so these are interlocking i got these at the uh, at, uh the container store i love that place which store is that now it's called the container store it's oh, a store. Sounds it, intriguing. It's just dedicated to nothing but containers and organization. And so. Yeah, I'm OCD enough that they would suck the life right out of my wallet. I'm oh, sure. I, we went. It's just me and my wife. Uh, ended up spending about three hundred dollars. Of course, we were buying stuff for the house too. Yeah. So, yeah, if you're stocking a house, that's actually, you probably got quite a bit for that. Yeah. So, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to build the sand up around the edge here first. Then we're going to bring it in because this looks, even though it looks like stone, it still kind of looks a little fake. So, and we do that in sections um, with the super glue here. Okay, we're going to put some super glue right here. So we just drop it in there and it usually picks up pretty quick right there. Um, small things like sand stuff like this have a tendency to dry super glue real quick, make it, it kicks it off. It's all about the surface area of the sand. Now, uh, Dale, I don't know if I told you this, but where I live, we actually invented super glue. Really? Yeah, because the uh, chemical plant that um, is here uh, was the plant that discovered it by accident. And because um, I don't know, do you, you remember Kodak Eastman back in the day? Oh, God, yeah. So Eastman is here. This is their headquarters. All right, cool. So, and they're the ones that discovered uh, superglue by accident. Um, but they accidentally messed up an electron microscope with it. So, but a lot of their promos... <laughs> I can't think of any kind of good activity that would lead to messing up well, an electron microscope well, they were with super glue. They were it wanting, sounds like a disaster in the making. They weren't trying to make super glue. They were trying to make another polymer. And they didn't realize how fast it was going to cure. And they were looking at it um, under a microscope. And it fused part of the microscope together. And this was before they watered it down, too. This is, you remember the pictures where you would see them lifting a car with super glue? No, the one that I, uh, not particularly, the one that I remember was the guy with the helmet and the strap on it. Yeah. And he'd sh shove himself up against a block on a girder yeah. and then hang from his head with his helmet super glued on. I remember that. Yeah, that's uh, that was crazy glue. But yeah, it's a, uh, it's the uh, ah crazy glue. Okay, oh okay. So now hold on. What am I? Crazy glue and super glue are the same thing. It's just uh, the um, okay, just a different brand. Yeah, it's just uh, we call it. It's just okay. something we call here super glue. So, but yeah, the the and chemical it may form, well have um, came from here. Let's see here. Now I'm gonna drop a little bit of the glue on it and let it soak into the to this area here. And what that does is um reinforces it and makes it stronger it makes it like plastic so and this is just build it up now i prefer this when i'm doing this this is what we call dollar tree super glue let's get it from the dollar tree it's like two tubes for a dollar 
so it's a lot thinner than regular but more expensive stuff so we can waste it so now is that your homemade recipe for dirt or is yeah, that official it's, hobby dirt it's uh this is a uh, beet sand that i've colored so um i just use beet sand for most of my basing now and i dye it before i put it on anything that's cool yeah and i like it like this uh, even though i'm going to paint over it because the um it clumps together really well it makes it look like, like stones and stuff so okay last bit of this and then we'll build it up some on the, the actual base part here okay so we've got this all the way around here um we're gonna hit some of these areas here just to make sure the glue's in there and then I'm gonna come up here to this area all the way down to here a little bit right here I noticed that the trolls were hosting another miniature painter before I got on they're cheating on me that was supposed to be a joke who, who was that? that I don't know that that guy was on here before me that they were hosting Who, Mike Disney? No, it was like something like painting or art with something. I don't know who it was. It was a model oh, painter. Cool. Well, I was, um, I was watching um, the channel Art of Mike Disney. Oh, that's probably um, him. Was he painting because, a dragon? Because you had... Yeah, he yeah. was painting um, a zombie dragon. Uh, yeah. But... I don't know if they were particularly hosting. Uh, yeah. Or maybe they were. I'm yeah. still not entirely clear how all of this gizmo works, right? But you used um, a smoker it was to... like. Oh, Jason's asking a question. No, Jason, I used the oven to dry it out. No, yeah, I was just joking about it because it's giving Chuck a hard time. So, the uh, I like to give Chuck a hard time. But I don't get to talk to him every day. It, makes me sad but no i was watching him yeah let's see here uh... now it came up as uh you know while you're waiting for troll lords to start why not have a look at this and i went okay i will have a look at that yeah, so i went and had a look and fine, said hi and chatted to the guy for a few minutes and then so, came back when you were ready to roll so here we go so we've got a little bit more texture around the edge of the base we've got some texture in these areas here like it's settled and what will happen is after i paint this i'm first i'm going to prime it probably black with some uh some black gesso and then i'll come in here and paint it like stone colored and maybe a little bit of dirt here and there in the rougher areas um then i'll probably put some fake grass around here on the base as well so um and then our dragon will sit on top of here like so this goes in there, so he'll look like that. And I thought You'll about be owning it like a boss. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I'm totally expecting from this auction to make like five, ten bucks for, because you know everybody's gonna be like, "Oh, Daniel painted that." <laughs> oh. I'm not entirely sure what you mean by that. It's a joke. Uh, let's make a joke because I always joke around about how horrible of a painter I am. I have a self-deprecating sense of humor. Okay, just wanted to be sure of that because I do too. Uh, all right, let's see if we got dried up a little bit here. Okay, let's see what we got. So I'm using a Army Painter a Masterclass brush today. This is a. Uh, a um, a Kalinsky sable brush, I believe, as well. Just let people know what I'm using. I'm not using my standard uh, ones from Element Games today. I'm giving them a break. I've, I've uh, cleaned them up and put some conditioner in them, and they're trying to reshape the tips of them out, trying to make them last a little bit longer. They've only so 
uh, miniature brushes uh, are supposed to be swapped out like every few weeks uh, because we put them through so much uh, rigmarole and are kind of hard on them. Uh, but I've been taking care of those brushes for so long now. I've had them for almost five years and they're still doing pretty good. So That does seem like an extraordinarily long time well, to be using the same brushes. I wash them every week and I shape them and let them dry and set. So that's just, I've never had a brush last this long before. Even the Windsor and Newton ones that I had that everybody swears by, um, it actually went out on me in less than like four months it fell apart you know and that was a by itself was like an 11 12 dollar brush so but these have just been trucking along i just really want to give the uh this army painter ones a try because i can pick these up locally i can't pick these element ones up i have to order them from the uk See, that's the bad part about being into miniatures and stuff. It's like everything starts in the UK. Let's see here. Oh, hush. Jason's being silly. Jason's at home doing work when he should be just painting models. Yeah, me and Jason have been painting models mercy for this about the same amount of time. I've been painting a little bit longer than him. You should have him on as a guest painter sometime. Yeah, if he can ever get away from work. Because you know, I'm just going to ask you for the next model that you paint to be another dragon, right? I, I know you are. <laughs> I'm that see-through. Oh, dear. Uh, at least it's not a dragonborn. Gosh. I hate that race in D&D. That and tieflings. Oh, my God. Tieflings and all the rest of that. Yeah, no, I, yeah. I don't buy it either. It's like, I tell people, this is what I tell them. I said, you can play, when we play 5th edition, I said, you can play any race in the player's handbook. No other races. Now, I said, now, when it comes to tieflings, because tiefling is a race in the player's handbook. This is what I tell them. I said, I want a story. I want to know why a tiefling is out adventuring with humans and dwarves and stuff like that when they're, not, when they're supposed to be messengers for the demon that spawned them. I said, I want to know. That's the story I want to know. And I said, if you write a good story, then I'll let you roll to see if I'll let you play it. <laughs> You're so I cruel. Said, I said you, you get a you get a, you can either pick ten numbers one through one hundred, or say high or low, and either one through ten or uh, ninety one through one hundred, and uh, you got a ten percent chance. I'd be happy just to get a story out of my players as to why they should play any sort of extraordinary race or class. Um, because in the best of times, it's like beating up a block of wood with a crowbar to get any kind of backstory out of them. Oh, yeah. And they all want a power game. <sighs> okay. Yeah, but I, I'm thankful. I, thankfully, I've been at this DM gig for long enough now that I've got many subtle and mischievous ways of getting around that with troublesome players. I don't worry about that stuff anymore. But I do insist that, you know, if you are going to power game, um, then it's got to be well backed by role play and story. Otherwise, what's the point? You want to be heroic? You want the heroic? Then show me that you're a heroic player as well. Thank you. Oh, yeah. We have uh, one of our mine and Jason's buddies. He's a uh... He's one of those hack and slash guys. He's like, he just wants the XP train. Just give him a room full of stuff to kill, and that's all he wants. Like, no. Yeah, I'm too much into story for that. I mean, I could run it, and it's not like, uh, 
you know, I've got most of the modules that I've got, printed modules from the uh, AD&D era, are things like um, oh, th uh, the Tomb of Thar Tharzadun and uh, Sojkant's uh, Lair and all the rest of that stuff, like all tournament modules. It's crazy. And they're hard as heck, but I ran them as regular adventures for my guys at one time. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, I love a good long RPG. Like, if if a campaign lasts for like six months, I'm happy. You know, that's what I want is meeting once a week with the guys and just playing. I remember, in you know, everybody's got to live up to my expectations that we had in high school. Because <laughs> like uh, me and Jason, literally the uh, and I'm I'm gonna tell them what we used to do, we had a gaming group in high school that every morning before school we would play for an hour. So we got to school early. As soon as the breakfast line opened up, we grabbed our school breakfast and we would sit down and play until class started. And, I mean, it's just like, it lasted for almost a year and a half like that until, you know, we, like, That's I That's pretty devoted stuff, buddy. Yeah, and... and it was great. It was fun. We had we had a blast and stuff like that. And then finally, our school banned dice, and it was only because people were gambling uh, in the bathrooms and stuff. So of course, we we figured out how to roll uh, on calculators, and then all the kids that were gambling found out that we were still playing D and D, and they're like, "How are you playing without dice?" And we had to show them how to do it. So they learned how to. Gamble using the calculator. Ah, uh, that's actually a pretty good story, man. I like that. Yeah. See, these teeth are very tiny. Of course, he is a young dragon. I'm just gonna say you wouldn't be saying that if he was chomping down on your leg. Now, I you? know, I know. Let's see here. Look at the rest of him. Is is uh, is terrifying like crazy. <laughs> He looks pretty arrogant and full of himself, too, for a young dragon. Yeah, I'm going to make uh, what we call a contrast paint here in a minute. Um, I've got this contrast medium. I'm going to mix it with, uh, instead of using a red wash, I'm going to use this contrast, and it's going to fill in some crevices and stuff like that, and um, it'll cover the entire thing, but um, it'll be after I put the last few coats of this yellow on, or this orange, and um, it'll kind of blend it in together. It's It'll be like, kind of like a glaze almost. So that's what I'll probably end up doing to try to get the tie in. But it's, it'll be after I also paint the the back spine. What color should I go with that on that back spine? Anybody tell me? Well, I think the suggestions were black or like a dark green. Okay. But know. I'm not... Uh, I. Uh, this is where I lose it on all this stuff as I have I know what a nice combination of colors is when I see it yeah. but to actually put together my own unique nice color combination I'm a com at a complete loss yeah I can't wait to so I, w I would say you'd be definitely would be the final arbiter of any of that choice well that's the thing though I don't really know what to paint it. Because I had to paint his side gills the same. Oh, see, look, I made, made a mistake. I got a little bit of that skeleton right there. Skeleton bone. Um, but no, I've got to paint his side gills the same color as his back. So, i got to figure that out. Um, well, I probably could dig up some reference images of red dragons. You know, Look some up and tell me what they what it looks like. I mean, I'm thinking a purple might look good. Like a reddish purple. Oh, that's a, another good choice right there. I'm trying to picture the red box, but it's behind me and I don't want to have to turn around and get it. Why don't you just keep painting there, young man? <laughs> See? Slave driver. Uh, let's see here. See, I no, you see. just <laughs> don't be twisting around. Keep your pretty face in front of the camera. Hey, now, this ain't that type of show. See, I've messed up. I've smeared it. 
And then Chuck wants to, what is my kids doing up there? It's probably cleaning the kitchen. They did this the other day. I had to mute myself and yell. Are you doing yelling at your kids if they're cleaning things? No, they weren't cleaning. Sakes. They were jumping. They were jumping around. They don't like it when I'm down here streaming. They would rather me be upstairs. So they they make they they try to be annoying. Okay, I have one picture here where it shows uh, a lot of black highlights, but the overall paint scheme is. Um, as uh, like a, the dragon looks like he's partially he is very reminiscent of lava. How's that? Lava, okay. Jason says they need to be dark red. Hey, oh yeah, I've got a Vallejo black red. Heck yeah, we're gonna try that one out. See, look, that's what happens. You figure it out. To be honest with you, most of the images of red dragons are just lots of different shades of red. Of, of red basically dark red to to show skeletal uh, fingers and wings to that light sort of almost pinkish red you've got on that fella there uh, to show like skin and stuff like that and then every shade in between. Yeah. Some golden highlights if the dragon's blowing fire. Yeah. And there you go. Although I also see one here now where it's red, and you would sort of, you know, you're at first look, it would be, oh, that's a red and black dragon, but the black is actually deep shades of blue and purple, and that's kind of a nice effect. Yeah. But yeah, those are the artist rendition, dude. So like, there's lots of latitude if you want to like uh, start a trend. Let's see, here. what's Larry Elmore say? <laughs> Let's get him on the phone. Hey, Larry, I'm painting a dragon. What do you recommend? You know, I bet you we can get Stephen Chenault on the line, and Stephen can call. Um, Luke and Luke can possibly can use us. the force well he could probably get us in contact with with uh, Elmore that's what we do we get Elmore on here tell him he has to paint us a dragon that could be cool like Luke listen Larry oh I don't <laughs> we need a dragon Get on here, Elmore. Paint us a dragon. Listen, as much money as we spend on your crap growing up, I was kind of upset. We, he was supposed to come up here to a con um, here locally this past summer. And I'm saving up some money because uh, I just want to get some of my favorite pieces. Like, you know in the second edition handbook, um, the picture where they killed the baby dragon? And they're all standing around with it hanging up. It's like the first picture in the second edition handbook. I can't remember. Anyway, um, I wanted a print of that one. And I didn't get one at Gary Con and I was because he didn't have it on him and I was hoping he'd have it, but he wasn't there. I was a little upset. Yeah, a bunch of, uh, it was so weird, because a lot of the guys that only hang out at the cons up in, up north were actually coming down, and we were so excited, stuff, so, didn't happen, well, it's life. Here's another thing, before we get off the topic of what colors are on Red Dragons, um, there also seems to be a slight argument for um, a, a paler yellow, an almost ivory color for belly that would then correspond with horns as well. And also um, a slight argument for black horns and nails on a red dragon. Hmm. But definitely not enough to be an actual trope. How's uh, that? All right. 
Well, I guess since I've done everything in ivory, I'll probably need to go and do it in ivory as horns. But I'm probably going to do black for the, the spine and gills. Or the, the black. Well, I would suggest if you're doing that, black for the horns would be good as well. Yeah. We'll see. We can always paint over it. Part of me just wants to chuck this thing in the at least totally awesome and let it sit and start all over. That's me. I, I, ne I never lock it until I'm done. He's telling Chuck, I was like, you want to get on here with us? He's like, nope. Mr. Troll Lord. Like Beans. I said, I like what I've seen so far. Yeah. I expected this to take a couple of weeks to do. I want to put some good effort into it if we're going to auction it off. Uh oh, they're coming downstairs. Tomorrow's Friday. I haven't. I'm uh, still doing my Friday show for right now. Am I coming through clear on the microphone? Yeah, you're coming through very well. Whoa, sweet. All right. Now, of course, I can't listen to you here in Discord and on Twitch as well. Ah, uh, it's all right. Because it's all, like, weirdly synced. I can switch between them but not do both at the same time, or I will very quickly lose my mind. It's fine. I accidentally was playing hear myself a minute ago and I was mad it's like I don't want to hear myself okay so let's let this dry let's check these down here they should already be dry yeah I'm gonna have to come back and fix some of the red Let's put him on his wings. He's upside down. All right. Uh, let's, where's my orange at? There it is. Fire lizard. All right. A little bit more of that. See, this is the only bad part about orange. It takes a lot of coats. All right. So let's see where we're at. So I could see where it probably would have went in better with the airbrush here. So let's try something that's coming off. I'm going to do it with the airbrush. The things I do for you people, I risk my health. Put a mask on, you great silly person. I don't have one handy. Oh, which you were all about twisting around just moments ago to get a box with a picture on it. No, I mean, like, I'd oh, have to yeah, go out to the garage and get it, you know. So, come on, compressor. Let's see here. We're going to see how this looks. Where did that stuff go? Here it is. Enjoy a free Dr. Pepper. Dang, Steve. This Dr. Pepper fascination. All right. Let's see if I can get this stuff to spray out. Yeah, there it is. Man, that should try it out. Come on. did ask what I want for, what I wanted for Christmas and I was like well an airbrush paint booth would be good so I don't die and she said like nope I was like thanks mom of course I didn't ask my wife that does get mad because my office is connected to our bedroom so she'll come down here and there'll be a cloud of like white smoke and she's like what are you down here burning I'm like I'm not burning nothing this is all paint 
I'm huffing raw paint, dear darling, but at least I'm doing it at home. Yeah. So, you know, let's clean the airbrush out. We're going to let that dry for a second. All right. I, at least I did get this thing. It collects my, my paint and stuff. I love this thing. Oh, hush, air compressor. Oh, yeah, Jason, we know. You got signed stuff from Elmore. So do I. It's hanging up in the game room. It's giving a hard time now. Now, I've been trying to get him to go to conventions with me. But he's always got work or something going on. Seems like it's I like think he's seeing someone else other than you, Daniel. That's what it's coming down to. I think he cares more about his family than me. That's what it comes down to. Oh, the nerve, eh? I what know. kind of a friend is that? I know. His two kids and his wife. What I need to do is get him on... Uh, oh, he pulled, only pulled 45 hours this week. Uh, I need to get him on there and, and race him on some uh, Super Mario Kart on the Switch. He just got him a switch this week. I've been playing. Um, I like video games. Sometimes uh, I, I find video games and I fall in love. There's a game uh, I used to play on the Nintendo called uh, Dragon Warrior 2, and in Japan it was called Dragon Quest, and it's still going. It's still a thing. Um, it's so like they actually came out with a thing called Dragon Quest Builder, which is kind of like Minecraft. And I'm like, uh, this is perfect. I love it. So I bought it. It was on sale. I've been playing that. Come on now. I had to clean this thing out anyway. Is it clogging up the... Uh... No, it's not clogging up. It's just going to get in there and dry up. So I'm going to put a little bit of airbrush thinner in there and just so it don't dry out. So, no, I usually just check this thing. I take it apart every, about every other week and throw it in a big old vat of Ellie's Totally Awesome for about 20 minutes and then throw it into the um, ultrasonic and it pulls every bit of paint off of it. So, okay. Yeah, it's probably the best thing ever. So, here, let me show you the brushes I was talking about that I use constantly that are. Um, Dang, almost five years old. Look at the points on these. And that's that's a okay, still waiting for the video oh, to I, catch up. I know, man. That that's a five year old brush, but where I take care of it. So the sacred brushes. Yeah, that's an Element Games. They come in a three-pack Kalinsky Sable brushes. Let's see here. I love them. Not sponsored either. Be awesome. Have you approached anyone like that for sponsorship? No, I don't have big enough of a viewership. I don't know how many people watch it here, but like I know I talked to Drew... And asked him how many people have been watching the Norse Foundry one. And he said, um, um, I had about 29 people last week watching that I couldn't tell. So, but no, I do, I am sponsored on paint uh, through Army Painter for classes that I teach. But um, as far as the show, I'm not sponsored or anything. Um, trolls have talked about talking to Reaper about getting me sponsored by them for paint and models and stuff. So, but I was like, well, that's cool. Thanks. It hasn't happened yet, though. So, not saying it's not going to happen. No, but at this level, I mean, you know, I think it's wise to, uh, not get too excited about oh, yeah. stuff until it actually happens because they're under all kinds of constraints as well oh, right I know. oh i know i know i completely know but no this is uh and i really only it's wanted... all very interesting to me and i'll certainly spread it around well see my thing I is i don't know that many people are into it i only want to really be sponsored by things i use so like um 
you know, like I, I really only want to showcase the products that I like and use. I don't want to be like, uh, this show is brought to you by blah, 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 and it's the paint I'm using this week. You know what I mean? I want to do what I want to do. Well, I think anyone who's um, looking to sponsor someone in an internet-based activity by now, if they don't understand that um, credibility and rep are the sort of currency of the internet, um, then they shouldn't be in the business. And that's why I say, if someone wants to send you something, yeah. say, sure. And if it's a piece of garbage, say it is. But I mean, say it is with, you know, back it up with why and make yeah. sure it's legit. Or just don't take the thing. Yeah. It's as simple as that. Yeah. And if they get all whiny because you didn't like and go, ooh, isn't it wonderful? It's the best thing ever. Tell them that, you know, it's like, go it's... back and read the rule book, you fools. And you can stick it with a send no shot. I mean, I already think you, you've got enough cred with me now, Daniel, that uh, if I wanted to get into this hobby, I'd get you to make me a list or ask you to make oh, me a list. I've got a list. Of all, <laughs> of all the beginning supplies, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm not going to do it because I can't. I don't have the money. I know. It, right? I know. I understand, man. Uh, let's see here. While that drives. But you know what I mean. You know, you've got that kind of cred, and that's what it, that's what it is. So. Well, I've been doing it for so long too, and I've made so many mistakes, so I know what to get, what not to get, stuff like that. So let's see. What we well, and I mean, on top of it, you mentioned several times tonight as well that you're teaching classes and courses. Is that done online? Is that something uh, that you can promote here on the channel for uh, people? To... I do it at conventions. Uh, let's see here. Oh, I see. Okay. So pretty much you're not doing it right now. Yeah, that's the only bad part. So. Well, you're you're doing this, so, you know. Uh, the trick is how to get the two audiences linked into one audience so that they follow you in both places. Oh, right? yeah. Well. And I... And I have special knowledge at all. <laughs> what Jason says. Uh, handles are rubbed with virgin olive oil each night. I have shared a link five times in the past hour going to write a URL and time on a gas station bathroom for a good time watch. Oh, thanks, Jason. That's pretty funny, actually. <laughs> Post to Patreon again. Okay, so let's see what we got here. Uh, I need to go back and fix some colors. So... We've got the Evil Sun Scarlet, which is what we use for the main body of Sad Dragon. So I'm going to go fix some of him up real quick while we've got some more. See, I don't, what the heck happened? Oh, wait, my video is on another screen. Okay, there we are. So you can see how, like, the red is still poking through here. And that's what infuriates the crap out of me. Um... Jason, you don't have to donate, man. Um, let's see here. So we're going to go back in here in these areas that I missed with the airbrush. And we're going to hit it with the paintbrush. Since we're at a point now where we can't really airbrush. I mean, technically we could, but it, it would look bad. See you, bud. I'll talk to you later. Wow, it's such a different shade when it's going on wet, eh? I know, it dries up so... But also, that's partly the airbrush, too. Yeah. 
airbrush does that a lot it does make it a little lighter per se which is fine though because we're gonna come in here and ruin it with a some ink here in a minute let's see here okay, some areas around the fingers yeah Jason's a good dude I can't wait till all this COVID stuff's over with first thing I'm gonna do is like alright guys it's time come over to my house we're playing I know. I would love to have a face-to-face -face game. Well, I've been build, building a gaming table. Like, where you can move the inserts. I've been planning a thing that I can place over my existing dining room table without damaging it. Well, this is what I did. I went on Facebook Marketplace. Somebody had a... Like a... Was it a almost a four foot by six foot table with six chairs for a hundred bucks so I straight up bought that took the top off of it and built a uh, new top that had an insert area to where I could pull the top off like the middle out and uh, have like a place for terrain and things like that and it's four foot by All six right. foot and the uh, the wood I used for it is the uh, bleacher wood from old an old um, um, high school bleachers. It's oak. So, yeah, I thought it was cool because, I'm like, yeah, look, I got. That'd be nice too. Got bleacher wood, cause uh, I'm fancy and all. It's oak. Let's see here. I need a container, and I don't have a container. That's what happens when I run out of pop bottle lids. Sorry. That's all right. Not your fault. Ugh, quit drinking soda. That's the problem. There it is. Be realistic now. What? I did. I quit drinking soda. Really? Yeah. I Why is that now? A year and a half ago. Um, so oh, okay. Because I had surgery. I see you meant like just like earlier this week or something. No, I... I, I um had surgery and my stomach can't handle carbonation anymore. Well, good. It's not that good for you anyway. Yeah, I did. Uh, I weighed a hundred and or sorry, I weighed three hundred and seventy plus pounds, and now I weigh two fifty. So I lost a little. So you and I are about the same weight then. I lost. Uh, I'm six, almost six two. I've lost a little bit of weight. But I had a gastric yep. sleeve. So this right here is contrast medium, which is a special medium that is designed by a company called Citadel. And they make a type of paint called contrast paint, which coats very well. It's a very uh, good paint. Like, to, like all you have to do is paint it white and you just slather it in. Like new painters that don't want to like get crazy with painting, that's what I recommend doing is learning how to use contrast paints. Now they are expensive compared to other paints, but I mean, if that's all you're doing is just slathering stuff on and just you want to get it to the table, I'd recommend that. So uh, what I'm mixing with it is a dark red crimson ink here. So now this stuff's going to look white starting out because you know it's it it's going to look pink. So see how pink it looks, and see how opaque it is. So the way this stuff is designed, it's designed to stain things and um, go into the crevices. So what we're going to do, this is where I may mess it up, and if I do, that's fine. We'll fix it. But we're going to go over that area that we painted orange with this. And we're going to see if it stains it enough. And I might have to okay, put, now I know where you're going with all I of this. I might need to put a little bit more ink in there. So we're trying not to get bubbles. So let's put more ink in here. 
when it's a little darker. When it will dry darker because the contrast medium dries clear, kind of like Elmer's glue, PVA glue. Okay. So we've got. That. I believe you. I'm watching you slather it on, as you were saying earlier, and I'm completely horrified. <laughs> I know you are. Uh, let's mix a little bit more. I mean, this is a really pretty... Although it is doing a very good job of sinking into the crevices and stuff, and if it uh, ends up the way I think it's going to end up, you're, like, starting to achieve that uh, goldish color that I was talking about that I really like. Oh, this is brilliant, really. Okay, we're going to let that... I'm gonna... A bit more on here. Put more pigment in there. And see what it does. Okay. Might have to put a little bit of black in here. Don't want to. Uh, okay. So we're gonna let that sit right there for just a second. Try not to let it pool in certain areas and areas we do want it to pool in. So. I've been experimenting with contrast colors and things like that. Um, but, I mean, it's just like a really pigmented wash is all. So we're going to let that go like so. Okay, let's let that sit for a minute. It takes a minute for it to dry, though. That's the only problem with this stuff. And we'll probably have to do two coats at least. And then what I thought about doing is taking... I got this gold over here, and I'll show it to you. It's this right here. It's called Gehenna's Gold. And what I was going to do is take a... I got these hard brushes... Uh, and we call it stippling. Yeah, I've heard the term. And I've watched a little bit of Bob. What's his name? Bob Ross. Here we go. That's so, the fella. Yeah. I want to be the Bob Ross of miniature painting. So, so <laughs> the brush I got right here is a really hard bristle brush. And so what I wanted to do was take the gold. Where did I put it? Oh, I'm going to show you something. So, um... If you're looking in the video, um, so you see at the top of this how the paint is separated, how it looks all crappy, and you can tell down here like all the pigment is in the bottom. So normally if you shake a paint, you, know, you do this a couple times, and it still looks kind of like garbage. Well, this is why I love this, this paint mixer. My kids got it for me for Father's Day. And I had an original, what was called a Vortex Junior Lab Mixer, that I bought and um, from a, an estate auction uh, of a guy who was a virologist, and I was like, really, was like, that was a bad idea. That's probably where the coronavirus came from. Um, <laughs> but now the top part here is stained. That's why it's like that. But if you can look down here where we had that separation at before, it's completely gone. So, it's just how it this thing mixes. And now, I've gotten tennis elbow before from mixing paint. So, you see how we put that in there? Now, it looks kind of swirly. So, what I wanted to do was take this stiff brush here. What are you doing, Chuck? Okay. So, I'm, I'm putting a little bit on here. And what we do is called stippling. And we're, we pretty much just tap it in like that makes it look like small coins and things are trapped in his scales or up in in little crevices on the scales it gives him some texture too so um, okay so we're i plan on doing that on the bottom part of him where he would really be just laying and rubbing in the gold and stuff like that because i wholeheartedly believe that that's what dragons do that's their main purpose in life is to amass treasure i don't care what color dragon you are you could be an ice dragon for all i care you're still going to want your gold they the dragon's horde is the number one thing. Now, give it some given time, somebody will probably turn around and say that that's racist. But, um, 
you know, that's just dragons for me, man. That's what they they Can are. Can you be racist with like an imaginary being? <sighs> yep. Supposedly, according to the fifth edition. Oh well, the fifth edition can bite okay. me. So <laughs> how's right. that? So here's this. Now, so the semi gloss. This is actually how is how I thought it would turn out right here. This is the black. So now, if I had a high gloss, it was supposed to look like um, like the um, chrome. So. And then, of course, you got the white here, which didn't look great anyway. But that's after we airbrushed that. And that looks pretty cool, I think. Right there. I mean, it's reflective. So, um, this was a McDonald's arch card, gift card. So, but yeah, I, I mean, I love this stuff. So, I'll be using it more in the future. Oh, use that card in the future, too. I'll strip all the paint off of it and repaint it. That's how I test stuff, as I do swatches of things. So I'm letting this dry up a little bit here. Yeah, we're gonna have to give it another couple coats, and then we'll come in with the dry brush, and then probably hit that. But I want to put this this red all over the dragon as well. I want to get it into the recesses of its um, scales and stuff. So let's start with that. So let's use the right brush. So we're gonna. This will be our first wash. Our metallic uh, paint is quite nice. Yeah, I like it. Love it. I'd buy more of it if I had a budget, Chuck. Oh, wait, did he hear that? All right. So there's another thing to talk about. Then is um, any one of these given uh, colors, these bottles of paint or ink or whatever you're calling it that you've sh been using tonight, uh, what's the average price on one of those? Okay, so let me, I will get these out for you and show you. Okay, and you also got to look at these in milliliters as well, because that's how they come, in milliliters. So, all right, let's see here. Sorry, this is messy. It's stripping everywhere, which is what I intended it to do. It's on purpose, everybody. Yeah, concentrate on the paint job. Okay, so, but no, I do like explaining things. So, um, people don't realize how much this stuff costs. Um, so, and this is what I, I like, so I'm going to put this on the face too here. I want to see how well that stains that, the um, ivory down. Okay, so let's talk cost. So let's put this over here to dry some more. We'll put him more on his horns now so we can get that into his scales. Okay, so when I first started painting, I started out with Citadel paints. Okay, Citadel paints um, back in the day came in these little, um, little bitty pots. They were hexagon shaped. Uh, 12 milliliters a pot um, and a pot of this paint was about $2.50 okay this is the standard Citadel pot shape now it's 12 milliliters I'll let it update um, this is a contrast paint as well so uh, this paint a regular paint not a contrast paint okay a, re a regular paint of Citadel for 12 milliliters is $4.25 about okay um now you can get bigger bottles of these things here is the contrast medium uh the medium by itself was seven dollars and eighty cent us as you see from right here um washes can come in big pots like these they're still almost eight dollars all right so um now i take all my citadel paints usually except for the contrast and i put them in dropper bottles so um, and then I mix a little bit of my Magic Medium wash, and I take them from 12 milliliters up to 17 to 18 milliliters because they are really pigment heavy, and I can thin them down because you're supposed to thin these paints down anyway. So I'm still getting about 17 to 18 milliliters. So now Army Painter paints uh, are at the lower end of the spectrum, okay, as far as cost. 
So their paints, this is 18 mil, and they are $3.25 locally. Um, then you have uh, Vallejo, which is this right here. Um, they run almost $4, and they're 18 mil as well. Okay. Now, and this is what I tell people. Uh, now, this right here, I'll show you. This, uh, I don't know how many milliliters it is. It's probably 20, 30, 40 mil, probably about 40 mil. It's an airbrush paint, so it's got a lot of airbrush material mixed in with it. This paint here was $10 by itself. Okay. Um, then you've got airbrush flow aid that I use all the time. It's 13 bucks. Uh, bottle, this lasts me for about two to three months. Uh, my primer that I use, this right here, um, I need more colors. This right here is about $20. Um, now, okay, if you're going to get into miniature painting, as I said before, if you want to use miniature paints um, and you're not doing like what we're doing, I recommend it getting contrast paints and learning to paint that way. If you don't want to use contrast paints and you want to use regular paint because that's all that's available or you don't have the budget for contrast paints because they are expensive. A bottle of contrast paints almost $5. Uh, I've seen that the larger bottles go up to $8, $9. You have what's called craft paint. Okay. So, let me get some of these out here. Um, so this is craft paint. You get 59 milliliters of this red colored craft paint for anywhere between one to three dollars. Okay. Now, the reason why I don't use craft paint as much as I used to, it's a good color. I use craft paint. I still use it on certain things. I use it a lot on terrain now. Because I need a lot of paint when I do terrain. Uh, but the reason why I don't use craft paint anymore is I use an airbrush. So the binder for craft paint is really thick. And it has a tendency to, when you mix it with water sometimes, to gum up. And so I don't really use it in an airbrush. and Because uh, um, I use an airbrush at least for my base coat. But look at this. So like I actually... I had a show a few weeks back where I grabbed almost every color you need to start painting with. Okay. And I spent less than 10 bucks uh, in craft paint. So let's see here. Let me get, get them out here as they fall everywhere. Ugh, I gotta scoot back. This is the fun part. I love explaining stuff if you haven't figured this out yet. I, I secretly think I should have been a teacher. So, uh... Well, you are, dude. That's what you're doing now. Let me just uh, summarize everything that uh, that I've heard from you so far. So, basically, you're saying for any given color or hue, whatever you want to call it, you're going to pay five, six bucks for your average size bottle. Yeah. A few bucks more than that if you're buying it in larger quantities. Yeah. For any of the special paints like the the Gehenna Gold and some of the nicer uh, tones now the, or the, more the, special the, stuff, the metallic pay at the ten to twelve dollar range. No, the well only on this guy right here, these big Vallejo bottles. Now the Gehenna Gold here came in one of those little Citadel pots I showed you earlier, which was only four dollars. Right. But it's this right oh, here is okay. an airbrush paint. So, so this is what I had a few sh a show a while back, um, and I actually painted a miniature using nothing but craft paint. So of course this big bottle of black, because I also prime with it. Um, this right here, this bottle of black paint, eight, uh, 236 mil, um, and you're looking at three bucks. Okay, if you go to a craft store like Michaels or Hobby Lobby or Blix, you can usually get a coupon. Um, 40% off, if you're just buying one color, you can walk out of there with one color for like less than a dollar. Um, this would have been like a buck fifty. So, um, so you need a black. So. You need a white. Um, this white here was 99 cent. Um, it works as any other white. Um, you need a. Now, here's the thing that I tell people um, <clears throat> when you paint your fantasy models, the most important color that you're going to have is brown. Brown, 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 brown. So what we got here, we've got a golden brown. We've got 
It's a dollar. We got a white taupe, um, which is kind of brown. Um, we've got, of course, a woodland brown, which dirt. Uh, and a chestnut. I really love chestnut brown. It's one of my favorites. You use it for leather. Okay. <clears throat> then we all learn as children to mix and match. Um, then the next thing I would tell people is you need at least two gray colors. You're going to need a, uh, a light gray and a dark gray. Um, your dark grays um, I tend to go to a blue gray. So that means that the black that this gray was created with used a lot of blue in it versus a black that used a lot of brown. Like this is more of a, a brown brown gray right here this gray right here so you know right now we're up to a little bit almost ten dollars um you need green all right um let's see here that's another brown um you need you know maybe two shades of green but you know if you just got one got this shamrock right here um yeah it's a, it's a straight up like grass green there um and I love these paints. I, do, I really do. Of course, you need an ultramarine blue or a cobalt blue. This is a cobalt. So, you need a blue. Of course, you need a yellow. I don't know where my yellow is at. I think my wife stole it the other day when she was making stuff for um, decorations. Um, you need a red. So, we got a red apple here. It's really nice red. Um, now, metallics. They're just a little bit more expensive in craft paint because they do put mica powders in them. You've got a nickel, which is kind of like a, a plate mail, and then a gold right there. So that's my metallic. So I, use, I also have another metallic that I love, and I don't get to use it enough, and it's one of my favorite colors. But it is amethyst. I love amethyst. I love purple. Purple is one of my favorite colors. Look at that. This is like two dollars on sale, but I love it so much. That color just blows me away. Um, then you need, um, let's see here. This is a deep midnight blue, which is good. Um, I got another gray, and then the last but not least color is this, and this is marshmallow or an ivory color. Um, this color here can be used as a flesh tone. Um, this can be used as, you know, goblin teeth, human teeth, whatever you want to do, you know. Um, but, I mean, that's your other last color. Now, there is, they do, uh, the craft paints have a um, flesh tone pack that you can sometimes get fairly cheap if they have it on sale. It's been hard to get right now because of the pandemic. But, um, but yeah, I mean, it's just like, it, if you're if you're wanting to brush stuff like I do, and you don't have a lot of money, then craft paint, that's just the way to go. Um, now, if you do have a little bit of money and you want a good basic set to start out with, there's a couple sets that I would recommend. Army Painter's got a pretty good basic set um, that runs a little bit over $20. Um, it comes with a couple paints and a wash and a paintbrush. So it's a good starter set. Um, Reaper has a good starter set. Um, even Citadel has a good starter set to start out with, so it's pretty good. But yeah, uh, I enjoy talking too much. I guess I well, you can blame me for that. Oh, that's all right, man. It's all right. So let's put another coat right here on here. We've given our uh, young dragon a. Uh few minutes to take a breather and let some of that paint settle down and yeah. learn a little bit along the way as well. Oh, yeah. Mr. Dragon. Mr. Dragon Man. Bring me a dream. Make it the cutest that i ever seen. Oh. I'm getting hungry again. This is when I start talking about food. Just on the wings yeah i'm always hungry yeah. every waking moment i could eat i might go upstairs and heat me up some barbecue yeah you've got the good eats to nibble on yeah. tonight so i put cheese in almost everything i eat um 
It kills my wife. She can't stand it. Why do you put cheese? It's so disgusting. I love cheese. I love it. Love it. See now that Could doesn't be ketchup. Look, that doesn't look too bad for his bottom. Do you think? What do you think? As far as the the gold with the there right there, his undercarriage. Oh, it looks pretty good actually. So we're gonna let that dry a little bit, and um, but no. Uh, so like I made some homemade chicken noodle soup uh, yesterday for dinner. In the Instapot, like with with carrots and and celery and egg noodles and all this other stuff. So, um, it's so like I had some cornbread left over from the day before where I made soup beans and cornbread. Um, so the <laughs> I took and um, of course I put cornbread in the soup anyway, so just to bulk it up a little bit. But I threw a piece of cheese in there and stirred it up today at lunch. And she's like, you're so disgusting. I'm like, what? It's cheese. Cheese goes on everything. No, it doesn't. I can't believe I married you. Yes. <laughs> so. It's a pretty universal food thing, I think. Yeah. And I know she likes cheese. Her favorite thing is cheeseburgers. So. <sighs> Cracking the neck. I don't know if you can hear that. Okay, so let's see here. This is pretty much dried here. So let's knock some of that off there. So what we're going to do here is we're going to take some of this black gesso. This is Jason actually turned me on this stuff. Um, to to get now look this right here. It, it was four dollars and I got it for forty percent off. So like two twenty, and it's lasted me a while. I use it to prime a lot of stuff when I had to brush prime with a brush. So, gesso has got an interesting property to it. When it dries, it actually stretches itself. So, you can kind of put it on a little thick, and it thins itself out automatically by stretching. Well, that's interesting. Yeah. So, we like using gesso here, especially for when I had to hand, hand prime. I wish there was a way to airbrush it, but it's all right. Didn't gesso originate as um, a thing that the oil painters of old used to prepare their canvases they still with? Do. And they still do, and it's because of that stretching quality, right? It yeah. kind of makes everything easier to paint on or something. I'm not sure exactly how it works. Yeah, it's, it's pretty much it. It's, uh, it stretches the canvas out. It makes it taut. So, tauter than what it is. But yeah, it's uh, it's good. It, it's really flat when it dries, so it takes paint really well. Of course, you would think if painters were using it to paint on. My daughter came down today. She's like, uh, Dad. I'm like, yes, honey. Um, it's lunchtime. I'm like, yeah. So, will you take me to Chick-fil-A? <laughs> I was like, uh, we got leftovers to eat. I don't want to eat leftovers. I want to. I want to spend lunch with you and time with you today. It's just you just want a Chick Fil A. So I was like, no. Ready? I said, hey, what are you doing, Chuckles? Dale, Chuck, Chuck, Dale. No, Chuck. Chuck is the man behind Troll Lords Games internet presence no if you, if you didn't know i hear him referenced across many different channels of social media yeah but do we really know anything about chuck oh, we know he's kind of like him. the stig on um on the on top gear mysterious always in the in the eye and yet we don't really know anything about him <laughs> Hey, man of I think he might actually be the reason why Steven doesn't like assassins because Chuck is no. one. No, I'm all I'm I am not that reason, Dale. I am all about leaving it all alone because then he wants to go and change monks. I'm all about that I like monks. I know in second edition everyone hated when, you know, things like monks and cavaliers and stuff came out. Yeah. But they're all still being used, which means that they're all they have all proven their worth to the player base. 
And I mean, like Daniel and I were talking about earlier, it couldn't get any worse than a tiefling, could it possibly? <laughs> oh, and you know, tieflings aren't even played right. I mean, like, if you look at 5th edition, I mean, if you look at some of the artwork that people do with these things, all they are is like, they over-sexualize them. I'm like... They're over-sexualized demons, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, just what's the point? They're not sucky by. I mean... Uh, it's just ridiculous. I don't like it. And are you trying to say that succubi are sexier than ty typhons? Yep, pretty much. Okay. One of those guys. Back in the old days. I mean, I meant succubus. I meant succubus. <laughs> Hush. So Chuck's local to me, too. So um, we actually met through our love for dice. So we both uh -oh. we both are dice collectors. And uh, so that... Um, yeah, we 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 met up one day for dinner, and I was like, "Here, have some game science dice," and uh, just handed them to him, and then he's like, "Cool." And then like um, we start hanging out. And then I was like, "Man, I found this thing called Fantasy Grounds." He's like, "Oh, I've been using Fantasy Grounds for years." So now we're actually playing together, and you know we drive the Gary Con together and stuff like that. So yes, the great Wayne touts Chuck as the uh, fantasy grounds guru uh, of the universe, pretty sucks. much. Wayne's a punk. Wayne is a but punk, I but I love him for that. Yeah, he's not here to really diss right now, so it's not as fun. Oh, hold <laughs> That's on. That's not true. Chuck, hold on a second. <sighs> what do you want me to hold on for? Oh, he went away for a second. I'm, I'm looking at it. I'm actually... Creeping around. I'm going to go to bed, but I was creeping around different streams. I'm always looking to see who's doing what. Like I said, you're like an assassin in the spy version of the... All right, I'm going to turn some lights out here real quick. Well, I was, I've been, I was after him for years, Dale, to move to the 21st century. And then when I lost my job, uh, they finally listened to me one year in Wisconsin. And here we are. So I'm determined. I am determined. All right, Chuck. Here we go. All right. All right let me right. switch to the channel and see. You better. Okay. The what? first ones are Borealis Light Smoke with Silver. Why are you going to do this, dude? Look, look, no, watch. Really? Watch. Ready? You're, you're going to see it here. I wouldn't know because I don't have them. Look, look at that glow. glow. Look at the glow. Right there. Look That's at that. interesting. So you one, one shot turned them up like that, huh? Yeah, look at that. You like that? Yeah, they don't look like much, though, without that on them. I know, but it's still... And, and the glow will last for a little bit. But it, it, it just reminds me. The next ones are Borealis Purple and White. Here you go. Look at that. Oh, man. Ugly. Oh, man. Look at this. Blasting. Like, boom. Look that's at that. Like the same color, to be honest with you. I think that's because of the It's because I had to turn off the lights. Next one is one of my favorites, the Pink and Silver. Look at that. Boom. Let's see it. Oh, yeah. It's just about like those bubblegum ones I got, but except it's silver. I think they've got a different color of sparkle in them. I don't remember. Let's see here. What we got next? Next one is their new one that they think is going to be the next confetti is uh, Borealis Icicle. I don't know if you... Yeah, I think that's the one I wanted. Look at that. I don't remember. I'll have to see. Yeah, okay. flash a light on it. Let's see what it looks like. Yeah, I think that was it. Yeah. Maybe. This is the one I was actually excited for, too. Um, then the green. Dots are out of control nowadays, though. Good Lord. Yeah, they're, they're insane. like minis. They're insane. Uh-huh. Not bad. And then I think these are the ones you'd probably like, too. The sky blue. That's it. That's the ones I saw the pictures of. I want to see what they look like. Yeah, hit those things. That's it. It's not bad looking. Yeah. And, like, you can't really cool. see the... They look like standard Borealis without the light on them. Do they? Yeah. Okay. And then, oh, yeah. I like that, man. That's I like that. Royal purple. I need to get a set of those. Mm -hmm. I like these royal purple right here. They're those like, aren't bad. No, they're those not. Those aren't bad at all. And then you've got the last but not least, the teal. These are cool. Boom. You like you into dice much, Dale? 
Um, I'm having trouble following because, of course, the, uh, the video stream is like about 10 seconds behind what I'm listening to. So I'd be more into dice if I trusted any of them. Well, I actually have a... There is a Daniel video. gave me a dice gel box. Oh, gosh, I don't know. A while back, and one of the guys that plays on our table, he uses it regularly. Here's the... Um, here they are without the the other light on them. So you can't even tell that they've got that thing in them. Hardly. So yeah. that's the teal. Yeah, you really can't tell it's got that in there. That's, that's, that's the, nice. I really like these. These are the royal purple. And then that royal purple seemed to have a lot more in it. Yeah, it did too. And then the green, of course, looks like their standard green. And you got the sky. Well, blue. hopefully you you'll want to keep them all. And you'll throw some my way. It'll be good. I'm probably end up having. To There's sell no them. yellows or oranges or reds in any of that, though. Is there? Do they um, have those colors in the no pansy colors, well? Dale. Dale, no pansy colors. Uh, they did have. Oh, they don't make. There's this. There. There's the smoke. It's silly man. Um, and then, of course, the pink, and then the sky blue. But no, they, okay, so, uh, when they first started playing around with luminaries, they had a, uh, reddish-orange one that, um, and it's out of print. Yeah, it was a reddish-orange, and then when you hit it, it, I don't have them anymore. It was, I bought them two years ago at Gen Con, and the problem is, though, like, I got rid of them about three weeks ago because one of my nephews was down playing Castles of Crusades with us. And I said, since this is your first time playing and you really like it, I'm going to give you a set of dice and you can pick from these dice here. And he's like, I really like these. And I said, great, those are out of print. Thanks. But no, you can still pick them up. Um, let's see here. I'll find them real quick for you. I'll post them in the link. You can get them on eBay pretty good, too. Um, I'll be right back. A second. It's called Chessex. I mean, don't get me wrong; they're all very attractive. But you know, I'm st and and I do need new dice. All the ones that I'm rolling with right now are largely all the original ones that came out in the in the early mid '80s with D and D. Man, my yeah. dice are really old, and all the corners and edges are chipped beyond belief. They're uh, tragic, really. Let's see here. Check these out. These are the ones I was talking about. They're orangish. Uh, they're mostly orange, but when they glow, they're black, blue, and green. You check that out right there. I just posted the link. That'd be kind of cool, I think. Yeah, they're still pretty, pretty I'm cheap. Wife just got home, so I'm getting wife aggro. Oh no! Oh yeah, ghostly brown. I think I've seen those before. Yeah, I had them. Remember? Yeah, those are a cool set. Yeah. Let's see here. You might like those, Dale. Yeah. Goodness gracious, let me on. Hey, what part of Canada are you in? Prince yeah. Edward Island, East Coast. If you paid attention, you wow, would have learned dude, that earlier. Like, um, is that past... Uh, is that... How far to the right is that? Um... <laughs> yeah, I'll... No. Sorry. That's, I mean, that's, I mean no, 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 no. I'm, ju I'm just trying to think, how far to the right is that? <laughs> I'm going... <laughs> Um, coach, but I'll just look. I can't uh, Newfoundland is the furthest off to the right. It's the biggest island furthest off to the right. Then there's a little slip. Yeah. It looks like a sandbar off the mainland. That's called Prince Edward Island. Canada's smallest, yeah, that lives in but most Nova beautiful. Scotia. Yeah, Nova Scotia is just a bit to the south and west of PEI. Yeah. New yeah, Brunswick's it's west of us. Quebec is yeah, to the north. Fish and all that stuff. Oh, he's retired. He's always sending me pictures of him up there. It's beautiful up there. Though that I wouldn't go in the nice. winter. So how well I've always wondered about Newfoundland. Is it pretty well developed or no? Well, yeah. I mean, in PEI, like I said, it truly is. It's it's ridiculously small you know, for yeah. a province or a state. But sure. then again, some of our provinces are ridiculously big for a province or a state. Um. Um, I guess it all depends what you mean in development. <sighs> well, I mean, there's I mean, only, there's any, like, there's not even, a, like, there's barely a quarter million people here in Prince Edward Island, like 250,000, right. and we'd be huge. Right. Is um, much it's very rural, small, but I mean, we have all the conveniences. But to be honest, we don't have the um, same level of, let's say, retail options that you would on the mainland or in one of Canada's biggest, bigger cities. So we're pretty right. universal like that everywhere. 
Like, really? You go up there to go up to the north of it, like Labrador. There's some crazy places up there. Oh yeah. Like, I found a town up there one time that had a Walmart, but the only way to get there was by boat or plane. There was no roads into that town, but they had a Walmart. I've never that's, figured out how yeah, that works. Labrador. Crazy. But there's a population there. A lot of big mines in Labrador, huh? Where are they mining? There's a teach lot of towns stuff. in Labrador. Uh, a lot of military geography. developments. And then, mm -hmm. of course, there's, you know, all the air pathways that go through Gander. Yeah, I used to teach geography, so I have a little fascination with all that. So here's like a, I've always wanted to I mean, we're, to, uh, we're a stupidly large country considering our population, but I don't know. Yeah. It works for me, I guess. So what's... Uh, what is that island called? I'm trying to think of the name. I'm just going to look it up here. It's just, it's right up north of you guys, out in the middle of water. What is it called? Uh, little tiny Baffin place. Island? Uh, no, 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 oh, no, God. no, no. Uh, called, uh, oh, wait. I can't pronounce it. It's French. Fatima, maybe? Spell it slowly. It's C A P. Dash A U X dash M E U L E S. Uh, spell the last one just slightly slower. M E U L E S. If y'all see, like right here's that base. Capo Mule or something like that. I don't know where that is. Yeah, it's just north of Prince Edward Island. It's just a small little island, just to the right and north. Okay, hang on, Mister. I don't know all the crappy little islands in the area. <laughs> Ferry that goes out of uh, Soros. Soros? It goes there. You're not thinking of Ile de Madeleine, are you? Yep, I think that's the name of it, actually. Yeah, how do yeah you the Maggies. That? See? Hey, Dale. Ile de Madeleine. There's a small fortune. Right there. If you look at the yeah. video. There. Remember we were I'm sorry, about say again. I said, there's a small fortune. <laughs> Remember we were talking about the cost of paint? So have you been right. to the Maggie's? Yeah. Anyway. Hang on. Ah, yes. No, I've not been to the Maggie's. Um, I know... Uh, <laughs> Hi! 